My Lord and my God, I firmly believe that you are here, that you see me, that you hear me. I adore you with profound reverence. I ask you for pardon for my sins and grace to make this time of prayer fruitful. My Mother Immaculate Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me. Today we find you, Jesus, telling the Pharisees a few uncomfortable truths in harsh and unequivocal terms. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites! You're like whitewashed tombs, which appear beautiful on the outside, but inside are full, are full of death men's bones and every kind of filth. These words of yours, Jesus, are difficult to forget. And you carry on, even so, on the outside you appear righteous, but inside you're filled with hypocrisy and evil doing. And the Gospel continues along those same lines. You, Jesus, who were so merciful and full of compassion for sinners and, and the weakness of men, you didn't show the same kindness when facing the sin of hypocrisy. It seems like something you couldn't take. You could easily forgive greed or lust or laziness or lack of charity, but hypocrisy doesn't seem to be on the list of sins that can be easily forgiven. You Jesus speak about the hypocrisy of those who appear beautiful on the outside, but the inside are full of dead men's bones and every kind of filth. Those who on the outside appear righteous, but inside they are filled with hypocrisy and evil doing. Those people who have two faces, but sometimes even more, you know, they're people with talents. <laughs> At least two faces, the one that they use when, when people are looking and the one they use when no one is watching. I am chaplain to three schools and it's something you see every day. The way students behave when there is no teacher and when there is a teacher. Or even the way they conduct themselves depending on which teacher is present. I remember a funny one a few years ago during the morning break. Teachers started gathering in the staff room to grab a cup of coffee or tea. There were at least a dozen of us. And we were chatting when, through the windows, we saw a couple of boys checking if there was any teacher around. <laughs> they couldn't see any teacher watching them, so they decided to climb a tree, which was their intention all along, a forbidden tree, like the one in paradise. <laughs> no climbing trees in school. There's a rule. Anyway, at the beginning, when I saw them, I thought, these guys are obviously kidding. It is impossible they don't realize that they are right in front of the staff room full of teachers at break time. <laughs> I mean, this staff room is on the ground floor and has massive windows. It's like a control tower, <laughs> a watchtower. Well, but they were not kidding. <laughs> they were so naive. They assumed that if they couldn't see any teacher, no teacher could see them, right? <laughs> so wet behind their ears. So a dozen teachers saw them from the staff room, marks in hand. They opened the windows and called them and invited them to get there fast, to receive the well-deserved attention with a dozen signatures from a dozen witnesses. <laughs> As you can imagine the faces when they realized they had been caught not by a teacher, but by a platoon of them. <laughs> well, like those hypocrites in the Gospel, they behaved differently depending on who was watching. That could be a good question to ask myself, Jesus, in this time of prayer. Do I have different faces? Do I behave in one way before some people and in a different way before others, or when nobody is watching? Because the fact still remains, there is always someone watching. You, Lord, are watching. The psalm we read today, Psalm 139, puts it brilliantly 
and we can pray with it as well. You have searched me, and you know me, Lord. Where can I go from your Spirit? From your presence, where can I flee? If I go up to the heavens, you're there. If I sing to the netherworld, you are present there. If I take the wings of the dawn, if I settle at the farthest limits of the sea, even there your hand shall guide me, and your right hand hold me fast. You see, the psalm is not describing you, Lord, like Sauron in the Lord of the Rings, like the teachers of the school, you know, invigilating, keeping an eye on you, trying to catch you off guard, right-handed. The psalm says that you are there to guide me. Your right hand holds me fast. And it continues, If I say, surely the darkness shall hide me, and night shall be my light, for you, Lord, darkness itself is no dark, and night shines as the day. Yeah, you, Lord, are there with me all the time. You see everything. And that's why we call that the presence of God. God is present. You and I are in his presence all the time. But we need to remember, Lord, that you are not like a policeman, like a watchman, like a teacher, but like a father. Like my father, who was proud of me when I behaved, when I did what he expected, when I, when I looked after my brothers and sisters and played with them peacefully. Okay. And when I worked and fulfilled my duties. Like my father who enjoyed it when I told him what I had done during the day. And enjoyed reading my school reports. <laughs> well, not every report, obviously. Just the good ones, right? <laughs> because, of course, my father God doesn't read my reports. He is there all along. You, Jesus reproached those Pharisees who were worried about what people thought about them, people who probably didn't care, but they didn't care about what God thought of them, who is the one who really cares. They were proud. They didn't have the humility to make God proud of them. This presence of God should never frighten us, Quite the contrary, it should be a great consolation and a great motivation. Consolation because if my father is watching me, what can happen to me? And motivation because if my father is here, I want to make him proud. Saints have always tried to keep in mind that presence of God. The thought that God is always with me and wants to be proud of his children. Do you remember the film The Sixth Sense? There's a very emotional scene in the car when the child explains to his mum what Granny said. She said, you came to the place where they buried her. Asked her a question. She said, the answer is, Every day, what did you ask? Do, do I make her proud? Do I make her proud? Every day was the answer. Every day. Wouldn't it be great that my father God could reply the same to me when I ask him, do I make you proud every day? Saint Jose Maria wrote in the way, Does your soul not burn with a desire to make your father God happy when he has to judge you? Think about it. Does your soul not burn with a desire to make your father God proud of you? Mary, my mother immaculate, you're also with me all the time. And as much as I want to make God, my Father, happy, 
I want you, my Immaculate Mother, to be proud of me every day. I give you thanks, my God, for the good resolutions, affections and inspirations that you have communicated to me in this meditation. I ask you for help to put them into effect. My Mother Immaculate, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me. <laughs> 